I have a confession to make. I came here with a speech, but after hearing these wonderful stories, I decided just to talk. So you don't get the speech. You know, over 40 years ago, I made the New York Stock Exchange co-ed. And they survived. <laughs> and, you know, the idea came from a male customer who was also a friend. I started as a trainee in research at $65 a week. And I was given airlines, aerospace, radio, television, motion pictures as industries that I was assigned to. And I changed firms, because after two years, two and a half years, a little bit more than that, I was making $130 a week and living much better, but the men were making 200, two and a quarter, two and a half. And that's a difference in the quality of life. So I changed firms to a firm that would pay me almost $200 a week. And the second day I was there, I got a call from Madison Fund, which was a closed-end fund on the New York Stock Exchange. And they said, we made money on a report you wrote. We owe you an order. So I went into the partner in charge of research and I said, Madison Fund called. They owe me an order. Shall I wait till I get registered? And the partner in charge of research practically shoved me out of the door and said, go up there, get the order. We'll make it up to you at Christmas. So I got the order. And uh, they used to pay salaried people half of what they paid salespeople. But I did get registered, and I was active in the New York Society of Security Analysts, and I started to bring in institutional accounts. And after a while, I was really making money, and I was shocked. <laughs> but the institutions treated me very fairly. They paid me for the research. And I found that I was basically just, I doubled my salary almost overnight, six months. So I asked Jerry Tsai, the Chinese well-known money manager who was at Fidelity, and then he started the Manhattan Fund. I said, Jerry, what firm can I go to where I'll be paid equally? And he said, don't be ridiculous, you won't. He said, buy a seat, work for yourself. And I said, don't you be ridiculous. And he said, I don't think there's a law against it. So I took the Constitution of the New York Stock Exchange home, and I studied it, and I said, that's for me. Well, I saw the exchange. I had been a partner at a small firm, so I was technically an allied member. And I went into the exchange, and they were shocked when I said, I want to buy a seat. But, and then I had to borrow money against securities, which I had accumulated. And all the banks were running out the door when I went in there to borrow money so I could buy the seat. The men did it automatically. And I was told because the man that ran the trust department of Chase Bank, I said, I guess I'm not going to get the seat. I can't get the letter that the exchange needs. And in 10 minutes, I had a phone call 
and David Rockefeller had to approve my loan personally. Anna was borrowing $300,000 against $400,000 worth of securities, a regular loan. But I got the loan, I got the seat. Now, let me tell you, there's something like that's called the ladies' room. I used to go upstairs to the sixth floor. And two and a half years later, I went down to the floor. I crossed a block of stock, which means I took care of both the buy and the sell part. And I said, Frank, I'll see you in a few minutes. He said, where are you going? I said, to the sixth floor. He said, you're not in any trouble, are you? And I said, no, I've got to go to the John. The sixth floor was the administration part of the exchange. So he said, you don't know where the ladies' room is? With that, he left the specialist post, took me by my hand, walked me across the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, and showed me where the ladies' room was. There was a ladies' room from the Korean War but no one had told me about it. So that made me a lot happier. <laughs> and I didn't have to go up to the sixth floor. Well, I've seen a lot, and when I talk to people here tonight, and I realize we have come a long way, but we really have a long way to go yet. I was member number three of the original Women's Forum, which Ellie Guggenheimer started. I've been a member of the committee at 200. I was head of the New York Women's Agenda. Uh, and when I come here, I, can, I really took so much pride when I saw the enthusiasm and the dedication and the determination of some of the people that are in this audience. It's wonderful, and I appreciate it. But we do have a long way to go. Uh, we need, we still need equal opportunity if we are willing to work as hard as we work. And I think that's the next step but I am thrilled to receive this award tonight. I really enjoyed meeting Rosie because she's the best known woman in the administration. She's on every dollar bill. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you for starting and continuing what seems to be a never-ending requirement that we keep plugging away so we get total equality. Thank you very much. What an amazing woman, right? Not just a uh, trailblazer, a pistol, as you can tell, a financial icon, but also a fashion icon. Did you happen to notice we have matching outfits? <laughs> I know that it caught your attention. 
Mickey, thank you so much. You're such a legend. On that note, uh, once again, I think Linda Bash wants to say some closing remarks here. But thank you for sharing an incredible evening with me. As I was saying to Linda, I, every single person here is a story for the Today Show that I would love to have and feature and do interviews with. So I leave here very much inspired and fulfilled and knowing that we are charging the course here and we are all trailblazers and hopefully many of us will have stories like Mickey's in our future. Thank you. Natalie, I just want to thank you so much. You were just wonderful, and thank you for bringing yourself, really, tonight to, to our event. I want to thank our awardees, our presenters, our feminist icons, Kathy, all of you, Michelle, thank you all for being here, and uh, have a good evening. Thank you. Enjoy yourselves. Please stick around a bit. Thank you.